All right. Hello, we're back. Today we're gonna try to make stories like that little strip you see at the top uh, of your friends and you can tap their faces. We're not gonna do any of the interaction today. We will set it up though so that you could tap and scale it, make it bounce or something. Maybe that's our goal. But our goal is just to lay it out. You can see it down here. I have a larger version. Let's, let's see the retina one. Yeah, or I really just zoomed it in. So we have uh, these series of avatars, and and as I look closely, because I want to I want to recreate this as close as I can. Um, it doesn't look like the names. Um, it looks like the name sets the max width. Like, look, Henry Helvetica, Henri's name here is about as max as it goes. So we could even count those characters and make that the width of our our element here in the grid container, and then have these overflow. Okay, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but look at how the image is fixed and it's not fluid inside of that space. So that looks like that gets set. And then we have this interesting gradient border. So we have a circular gradient border, which is notoriously tricky uh, because you could do border radius uh, with a background, and but it wouldn't look the same um, or it would, but we wouldn't be able to get the outline here. So it's like almost like you could have like a border color with a gradient, which you could do with like a border image but that um, doesn't, let's see what that, fo it would follow your border of your, your, anyway, okay, so that's our goal, right? We're gonna try to work that out today. I've got a couple of different tricks I wanna try on it, and there's also like a little bit of an inner shadow so that the image looks like it's sitting inside of this. So there's lots of complexity here in this little layout, and even just this like overflow scroller here, uh, we'll get into that. So we'll create this whole background color, this, let's, let's just get started. I have a feeling this is gonna take longer than we think which uh, seems to be happening a lot right now. Uh, let's start with our colors then. Okay, so and I boosted up the font size a little bit. Let's see if that helps anyone on mobile watching uh, like Sean Wicks, uh, well, Sean Swicks, Sean Wicks. That just sounds cool. He's now, now you're just a, a movie star. Uh, just kidding. Hi, Sean. Thanks for watching. Anyone else want to shout out? I can do those. I don't have any followers, so uh, I'll say your name. It's really fun. Okay, whatever. Uh, root, okay, we need a surface color. Should we do the surface colors today? Sure, I'm already here. Surface one, this is gonna be HSL, zero, zero percent, zero percent, that would be black. And we want something, let's see, the gray there is probably like 98, something like that. Copy that, surface two is not quite, uh, well here, this was the almost white. We want the kind of gray, so let's do 90 and leave this one at 98. So that's what I'm looking at here is for this like light gray. Then we have the white, we even have that border color. We could probably drop that one in here as well. I bet you it's somewhere at like 80 or 75. Let's do 75. Okay, so that's our surface colors and we only have the one text color. Um, text one, HSL, and it's pretty dark. Okay, save that, use those in our body tag here. Got our background color var uh, surface one, because that would be, oh no, we want surface Oh, look, I have some naming issues. One, two, and three. So are these backwards? Should this be the lightest? Yeah, look, they're not in order. Okay, so what am I going for here? I really need like just kind of three different gradient colors. The border probably isn't that important. We have the surface, which is great. Oh yeah, I did want this as surface one. And our text color is for text one. It's kind of like when we get into our section here, let's let's just imagine it's there. Uh, it's gonna have a background color of, well here, let's do background color of surface two. Because surface two, oh, surface three, really. And look, our surface two, that's not even a surface. I'm gonna give this one surface two. Let's just stick with this. We have two surfaces. We have really light gray and almost white. And our section here, we'll need some padding like two rem. We'll stick that in. And we'll go back to our HTML. We've already collapsed the head tag here and we'll create our section. So our section, uh, sure, it doesn't have anything in it right now. And really we don't need children yet because this is a pretty fixed width uh, scenario here that we got. So here, can I move this up here? That's nice. And I, do I even need divs in here? I don't think I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use a figure because we have a figure is good for an image and a caption. And that's arguably what we have. So I can even say fig caption. I could make all of these in one fell swoop with some Emmet here. So I could say figure times eight, and I'm gonna need inside of there 
um, a picture. Well, I don't know how to do and uh, and something else. Oh, just like that. Okay, I need a picture and um, a fig caption. Cool. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, picture. Uh, we'll get to you. Fig caption. Here, let's do Stolinski. Our uh, Henri Helvetica. Helvetica. And look at our pictures are different between the two. Sierra dart dot argyle dot art. That would be. Oh. That one decided to try to go somewhere. This one is S Z Y N S Z Y L I S something else. Uh, I think the other picture had more information. It does. We I want these full names. So we have Unreal Helvetica Helvetica. Now we're spelling spelling it right. Oh look, Wes Boss was in one of these. It's not in these anymore, huh? Uh, C N S Y L I S. Uh huh. Z Y S. Okay, Sarah Swedan. And our next one is uh, um, Kusamari. We'll throw West Boss in here. West Boss. Uh, last one. Shout out to Paul Lewis, who's just the most radical homie in existence. Okay. Great. That's fine. Because uh, we don't have any content to work with. I think that's okay. I think we can get most of the way there. Uh, with what we have already. All right, so we have our section, and uh, we need to here. It needs a border. It needs some border radius. Let's let's do some of those things. We've got border, one pixel solid. We decided to get rid of this because it's not a surface color. This is just a border color, uh, and we'll do HSL zero percent. Um, we don't need a hue, and here really we don't need a percentage there. That's a degree, so we don't need a percentage of our saturation. We just are dealing with lightness. Let's go with like 80%. Great, that'll do for right now. And we'll do a border radius on here as well. Keep our border things next to each other. Border radius, one uh, X seemed to work out before. Let's maintain that. Okay, that looks fine. Um, I know that figures come with a whole bunch of margin because I'm like, where'd all that space come from? Uh, we can go check them out, right? A figure, yeah, figures come with a bunch of margin. That is great. So we'll go find uh, these are our section here. Let's name our section too. So let's give this a class. This is a class of um, floating heads. No, this is a story. It's friends stories. No uh, stories list ah, avatar list. Who cares, right? Why am I even worrying about this? This is just uh, a horizontal. Story, friends, hold on, friends list. Ugh, who cares? <sighs> so stressful naming stuff. Just want it to be done, which is, I think, why people like CSS modules. Okay, so uh, that was for our section. We're essentially just moving all of our styles there, huh? Okay, well, I'll do it the hard way. Great. Wee, wee, wee. Did I save our HTML? I did. Okay, that is all worked out. And section was already matching. Okay, so what we're gonna do is section in here. Any any figure, and they are direct children, right? Any figure, you're, you don't need margin. We're gonna go ahead and zero you out. Okay, all right, let's work on this grid then. So um, this is a very fixed fixed grid. It, it's based on this character count, which makes me think we could do something with CSS grid and kind of knock this out quite swiftly. Um, we do have overflow scrolling to be considerate of. So when we are scrolling, what's important is we want this image to go directly inside of here when it's scrolling as well as like, see how it's escaping right there at the image that like no bleed scroll effect I think is really important. So we're gonna make sure we emulate that, which means I think I'm gonna want a nested scroller. It's notorious, like here, I'm just gonna shrink this down a little bit so we can get this all to fit. Nice. It's notorious that um, a scroll child and, 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 and it being a parent at the same time are kind of hard. Like if you're a container and you're saying, here's my size, but my children can overflow, you're asking a lot of the layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break out our two layouts. Um, I'm going to have a scroller 
And that's going to just be an overflow thing. It's like, hey, I think something's overflowing, whatever's there, scroll it around and stuff, right? So that's what we're going to set up. And then that thing that's in there and that's and that's exceeding the parent's space, that's going to be our grid or our flex layout. Like flex will automatically do that. It goes no wrap, squishes them all into the space. And we could say, hey, no squishing. And then they'd uh, flow outside of our viewport. Uh, or we could use grid and basically say, ah, we know how big our boxes are. Our boxes are going to be this big. And um, I think we should start with that because I saw that the text was responsive inside there. And I think that makes sense. Okay. So it's like the layout is going to try to set the squares at a space that will always show usernames of this length. But if it gets smaller than that, it will ellipse. So we'll have to ellipse and allow for some of this flexibility. Look at how, look at this little layout has all these little complexities in it. Who would have thought? Um, all right, if that is the case and we like the thought of a grid, let's just go display grid and we're gonna say grid template. Oh, we need an, a wrapper. So if this was our horizontal friends list, let's leave this section. Let's say this class is equal to overflow X, excellent. And inside of here, we'll do a div with uh, our class on it. Great, we'll take that, grab all of these, bump them in, come in here, close that div, and call it good. Let's do a little organization so we can see that, and that's fine. All right, we need to update some things. Our grid is gonna be fine here, so grid template columns. Uh, let's just do like repeat uh, 12, 12 characters, something like that. I haven't counted yet, so we'll have to go check that out. Um, repeat. Yeah, it's just going to repeat templates at 12 columns. Okay, that should be fine. We'll see in here in a second. It looks like I did something wrong because we don't see anything yet. I need to do scroll X. Yes. Okay, so overflow X is auto. We're going to um, over scroll behavior x contain so that's going to keep our scrolling inside of there it won't leak it'll be much more native and natural and that uh is all i care about for right now we might look at that later oh uh mm, mm, we'll see okay and do we save in here we have overflow x and a horizontal friends list overflow x is that what we called it yep and horizontal friends list. Okay, horizontal friends list is not showing a displayed grid like I thought it would. Let's go check that out. It says it's a grid, grid temple columns. It does not like what I wrote. So uh, we want to repeat. Actually, what I want is grid auto columns. What I typed is essentially this. And I need grid auto flow row column. I, I can't remember those at all. Okay, so that's essentially what we're going for. Let's retype that over here. We don't want grid template columns because we're just repeating them forever. We want grid auto columns, at least for now. We might work our way out of this. And those are going to be 12 characters each. Strictly, we'll have a gap of one character. Uh, although, let's do two rem since that's our padding and that might give us some really nice harmonious space between each of these. We'll see. Um, and then our direction, yeah, grid, grid auto flow. Uh, column. I do type grid auto flow quite a bit um, when I'm doing layouts like this, but that was also before Flex had it, so eh, we'll see. Okay, I like that our grids persist. I still really dislike that y color. Why? Why would you? Why would you do that? Give me something cool. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Here, let's get our little helper screenshot back. Yep. Okay. We have our blocks. They need text aligned center. So we can probably do that with grid, but since hmm, the figure, I think the figure can be responsible for that. So we'll leave the, the figure um, unclass named for now, just cause I don't know. We'll, no, we'll say text aligned center. Should be pretty straightforward there. Don't need to bring in a layout mechanism to do that. We do want to say um, for the fig caption, is uh, overflow hidden, this is for text ellipse, uh, t um, overflow hidden, uh, white space, no wrap, and oh man, what is it? It's um, text 
overflow ellipsis. Oh, it highlighted. It must be right. People are probably watching and they're like, why? Why don't you use type ahead? Why, why aren't all the boxes flying in and you're choosing from the options? Ah! I don't know. I, I, I've seen those a million times and they just eventually get annoying. It's like instructions. You're like, ah, I've put the Lego one like this before. Can you just not show me the instruction on how to do it? Anyway, uh, maybe you're alongside me there. Sometimes they're really nice. Uh, I like to invoke it with a hotkey instead of having it automatically popping up all the time. Okay, anyway. Hey, look at this. We already have a s uh, like semi overflow. It looks like our, our child element is definitely going uh, over. We did something wrong in our selector for overflow X. Let's see, what what's wrong in our styles? Hmm. I wonder if this has something to do with the fact it's in a grid right now because it's being centered. Let's see, uh, max inline size 100%. Like, because we're not scrolling the thing I thought we would be scrolling. Right, okay, so if this is overflowed, I don't want to see the grid, so I'll just turn that off. I'm not fixed in my width here, am I? Let's try getting rid of our grid, place content, center. We repro the same issue. The items inside of the scroller are exceeding the container, but this container. Overflow. If I take that off, we flow. OK. <laughs> what is happening? I'm doing something wrong, and I don't know where it's at. Oh, look at how big our section is here. That is smelly. Let's get rid of grid. Okay, now our section has a scroll bar in the right spot, but it's not in the right spot on the right. This is full as width as it needs to be. It has no issues. This, I'm just gonna try fixing this to like viewport width. Okay, so now, oh geez, mouse wheel. Oh, and look, it's consistent with it. Oh, I know what it is, y'all. We have the styles uh, for our container on our friends list. And that should be the change we're looking for here. Yeah, okay. So uh, that would explain why we were scrolling our surface. It looked like our surface was scrolling because it was scrolling <laughs> it was our surface. Um, great, right? This stuff is hard. If you think somebody out there is doing this perfectly all the time, I don't think you're right. I think you, uh, I don't know. That's what I'm hoping these videos are good for is it's like normalizing that um, I get stuck on stuff all the time and yet I study it for my full-time job. So hopefully that's making someone feel better about themselves. Okay, we've got our overscroll containment. We've got our borders and our styles on that. Uh, we now have these centered and spaced well, so let's, I can bring our grid back in. Let's fill out our picture. So our picture element, um, okay, let's pull up our comp. Okay. It's inset only from the width. Like if we were to go draw boxes on these, I imagine the text is being fit edge to edge. We're inset, not by much, and only in the width. and. Okay, so that would be our figure picture. And we could throw an image in there, but I don't think we need to yet. Our figure and our figure picture, um, these nested selectors are looking kind of ugly and it's a good time to break out if you want to. Like this could be a different class. You could make this a new component because really what we have here is we have a container that's managing an overflowed layout. And then we have child components in here that are that are like, they're gonna do all this complexity here and the parent thing shouldn't care. Anyway, it's be a great time. For, this is a good smell. 
what I'm saying is, is when I notice this about my own work, I notice this is a good time to go change. Uh, I'm going to ignore that right now because it doesn't matter, at least sort of. Anyway, let's go with 90%. Uh, and that should give us uh, no, nothing really because there's nothing in that image. So that's not even a fair request. Um, though it is fair because the box that it's in is established. So it'll be 90% wide. What we want is the height to sort of, well, be auto of that, which really means we want aspect ratio one to one. We'll see if we get that here in a second. So if that makes sense is what we want to do is we want to tell this thing what width to be. I don't always like doing that with images because I want them to be liquid, but this one's not a liquid image. This is a very fixed image and it's being put into a circle and that's totally fine. We might even use background image, we'll see. Ooh, could this be done with a multiple background? <gasps> I think so. Wait, 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 wait. Let me look. Okay, if this is a multiple background image, we have a gradient square. We have a, a radial gradient that's just doing this two pixels here. Oh, we can't do that inner shadow though. See that like inner shadow? Oh, maybe we can actually, because we could do another one. So not a white uh, radial gradient. We could do one that's just like gray. It has this little, I, we might be able to do this as four images. This one in the very back, this one layering just over top of it, or maybe even underneath the other two. We'll see. We'll see if that's more or less complex than a lot of the other options we have here. We'll see. Okay, uh, and we want that height and width to match. We'll see how that works out here in a second. Uh, can we set that? Well, I don't see any um, any changes in our layout here. And like, so let's see if I go to picture. Yeah, it's it's like look, you can't lay out here. There's nothing to do. So we need to put an image in there. Let's put an image in there. Something to start hacking around or. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want to do that. I'd rather have this thing be very fixed. Wait, we know how many characters wide our names are in here. This actually looks a little wide, right? How many? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can't count that small. Where's the larger one? There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Looks like fourteen or fifteen. So let's change ours to fourteen. I like that unique number. And let's just say the width here is fourteen characters and the height is fourteen characters. And then we don't need aspect ratio. And then we can have a shape to start to work with after we set this to not be display in line. Right? Display block. Aha! We might have even had that issue before. Okay. And just because uh, we need to, let's look at a background color. Uh, oh, uh, sure. Give us something to look at. Mm, or not. It's our grid blocking our view. Oh, it's they're on white. Light gray. Doy. Oh, or they were white. I could see them after I looked a little closer. Okay. I think, does that hold our box shape well? Let's see. Oh, the names definitely need some typography help. Oh, this is also way more blown up. Let's see. This is, I think that is on white too. I'm gonna go take our surface and just bump it all the way. Great. Yep, okay. Uh, yeah, who cares? Uh, let's see, so now we need to pretty much do our all of our work to kind of create this illusion do we have any scenarios where the names are wider than the image? I don't see one. That's concerning to me. The font size might need to be set here in the figure to kind of help scale things up. Let's see, one rem. I didn't really lock anything up. What I'm looking at here is this text seems awfully like if this is 12 characters, why aren't we really at 12 characters? We might have to drop our width just because, oh, let's, yeah, because the count isn't matching up one to one. Like, oh, yeah, look at that. Our text is even, there we go. 10 characters is a pretty much where we're at. Okay, let's change. 
change these to 10 characters. There we go. Look, now we have a cutoff, just like our other one was. Well, like our little one that wasn't all zoomed. Okay. Okay. Oh, look, and Sierra Argyle Art is not... Oh, I think it's because of Sierra Argyle Art, and I just wrote Sierra Argyle there. This is my wife's tattoo account. There we go. There we go. And look, we're cut off on Y there and on L here and on T. We could even shrink a little bit more, but okay. I feel like we've hit a pretty good little spot here with that. We could have some spacing between our uh, picture and our fig caption. So let's go ahead and set display grid with a gap of one X. Watch these just sort of split out a little bit. Okay, excellent. Let me see our grid overlay and how we're doing here. I think that makes sense. Okay, okay, so we're scrolling, we have text overflow, we've got the primary layout here, and we're, we're ready to um, dig into our crazy image hack. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna go grab um, all the portraits of those famous CSS folks I'm following on Instagram. Instead, I'm going to just put in some random images. So I'll come to this first one and uh, let's see. I don't know. I don't know if I want to use an image tag yet. I put a picture in there. It's a figure. It's a figure. It needs an image and the image can be, is fine. We should be able to put the image in there, place it, fit it and wrap it. And we should just use an image. It's a fig caption. These are images. There's no reason that we can't avoid this. Okay, I'm not going to put any alt on there, but if you were in a template engine, you should definitely be putting whatever, however you got this text here, should be going into your alt. Definitely remember to do that. Okay, good. We have a bug right off the bat. Let's fix that with some CSS. We got a picture, and inside of our picture uh, is an image. Look at this smell. Although they're all directed nesting, and it's pretty semantic, so I'm not really worried about that. Okay, image is um, mm -hmm, width. Uh, we don't want width. Ooh, did I use width? Tisk tisk. Um, inline size, block size, inline size, 100%. Object, fit, cover, and block size. Great, okay. We might even be able to clip path circle 50%. Okay, so hmm, I might stick with that just for now because that's kind of cool. I wonder how much we can do on the border. Mm, that'd be really interesting. And how much is it going to be annoying that the image is a child competing with the picture stuff? Okay, let's just work our way into it. So this is fine. I'm going to get rid of our background light gray because our quest now is to see how much this gradient effect we can pull off with just CSS and not do anything nuts. Um, I do want to see if the image, can the image get, let's just try it in DevTools here. Box shadow, inset, X, Y, none, no blur. Let's do a spread of something big with a color of red. Oh, red. Okay, I don't see it. Do I need to set a display on it? I don't see a box shadow, so maybe inset won't cover up content on an image. I don't even see my uh, box shadows at all. How about on a picture? Box shadow, inset, X, Y, none, five pics, red. Okay, there it is. So I don't think a box shadow is gonna work on the image directly, which is fine. Cause look, box shadow is a box. We don't want box shadow. Oh, I hate it when my mouse does that. We don't want the box shadow. We really want a drop shadow. Oh, maybe that's what we can do. But I don't even think that's what we want necessarily. Like I'd rather have a, a one pixel, a semi-transparent black border just on the inside. Okay, let's just work on the inside out or outside in and try to get that outer gradient done. Um, okay, so if this is our box shape and our image is inside of that, I wonder if our image should have some padding to give us some space. Um, didn't we do some investigation that the left and the right were inset. Oh, that was here. And that's because we have the max inline size. Okay, so we didn't do that with any padding or margins. Uh, we did that work with a size and the size is coming from the grid. Okay, 
Okay, that's good. Which means that we want, I want to be respectful of that space that the grid allotted and not exceed out of it. Because one of my first ideas, well, I can just paint an outline out there and not worry about overflow and try to figure that out. But mm, I don't think so. I think we should try to stay within these bounds and work. Oh, let's check our comp. Larger one. I guess we can't tell from the comp if they're in the bounds, but I just imagine that this is fixed here because everything's so consistent. So let's do that. I'll save and we need to have our image have a little bit of a, let's see, is it uh, some padding? No margin because we need it to push from the edge uh, all the way around two pixels. Is that going to mess with our box centering? Totally. It looks weird already, huh? Oh, because it's we need to set a display type on it. No, well, maybe not. I don't know if that really worked out that much for it. Yeah, look, it's kind of cut off and funny. All right, we're going to have to work that out in a moment. See, can I do that with my clip path? I could clip a little bit more inside. Is it? Okay, I'll just clip this a little bit more inside. And we'll build our gradient here. Okay, so if I do background... All right, here comes the crazy gradients. Let's just do our first one first, which is linear gradient. This is gonna be the easy one to type. This is two top right. We have orange and deep pink-ish. I'll just start with that. Cool, let's get our, our, yeah. Okay, there is the color phase. It might even be to purple. Um, let's do that. Rebecca purple? Purple. Mm, not quite. I'm going to leave it at deep pink. Okay. Our next task is to, well, to give this a border radius. We need this to be a circle. So border radius, 50%. Okay. And let's go inset more than 48% here. And let's go 47. Uh-huh. Oh, we're going to want to go more than that to make room for the white ring as well maybe even 40%. Hmm, I feel like we're losing an amount of our our avatar here, but I suppose that's been the whole point this whole time. Oh, we're cropping more than we need to. This might be cover inside that space there. Hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, that means we can use background size and maybe offset some of this. Okay, we'll get there. Let's finish out our gradient here. This next one is a radial gradient. Um, that's just going to have a lot of transparent parts to it. So, got a radial gradient. It's always from the center. And so, if we just do like white to transparent, what do we get? Okay, so the white color's in the center a lot. That's what we want. We want that to own like a whole bunch of the, the gradient here. Oh, that's too much. It's 50. Okay, and then if I set this to zero, I think that'll give me a hard edge. Yes, okay, and now look, our uh, percentage here can bump up. 65. Huzzah, I think we got the outer one. Let's drop this one in here, 42. Cool, okay, we have a new bug to fix though, which is the object fit cover. Let's try using uh, background, oh, I can't use background size. That's the same thing as inline size here. Maybe I'm not 100% fit anymore. Maybe I'm 90% fit. That is not gonna work for us. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, honestly, in here, I'm gonna do on the big caption font weight bold. Or how about let's do 600. Too much, 500. 500 is good, okay. Um, hmm. Are we done? Can we be done? I think we're almost done. Let's scroll it. Let's fill out the rest of the images. I've got just kind of like placeholder stuff, right? Here, image, three. Let's do this, doop, 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 doop. Boop, boop. Five. Six, seven, eight. 
who do we appreciate Paul Lewis? He's going to have a girl face. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Okay. Let's get our one we're comparing to here. All right, wait, wait a sec. Are we... We're doing okay. I did see that scroll issue. And are we scrolling edge to edge? Let's see. We haven't really messed with anything, so we should be getting something pretty similar to that. Yeah, okay, so we're bleeding edge. We have... A scroll issue at the end here and I think that's because it's not specced to include padding in the end of your scroll so um, the spec has either changed or something's happened but we need to fix that because that we need two RAM of extra at the end and I think the best way to fix that is you can do an after element let's try it so we'll do a figure so it's our section. What's got in our main layout here is horizontal friends, each figure. Okay, so here's our fix. We've got our figure selected. And when it's the last child, um, we'll create an element after it. That needs some content so it can take up some space and it will have a width of two rem. Will that kick us over? Oh, weird, I saw a movement on our height. So here's our figure. Oh, that's not our last figure. This is our last figure. Here's our last figure in our, in our after is falling underneath. And even though we have a grid, oh, because our grid is on the fig. Oh, it is, it's putting it under, because that's the layout direction. So we gained our space, but underneath. Um, and we don't want that. Can we go position absolute and like right negative two rem or something like that and still have our width. Does this need position relative? This is getting ugly. Okay, I saw our horizontal or our vertical shift went away. We lost, like it says width and height is none. Does it need a height to do something? Oh, it does. Okay, so we fixed it. Interesting, do I still need the width? I do, and I still need the negative right. All right, here's our fix, yikes. Oh, look at that. We got inline size. Uh, we have a new inset we can see. We can say inset end, I believe. Maybe it doesn't like my styles there. Oh, look, it has bottom right. Oh, I need the height 100. Block size. That it? That's it. Okay, y'all, I think we have done it. The next thing would be to make each figure sort of like do stuff on hover. Um, like here, we can just do that here. Cursor, pointer, this is like the fun part. Everything's all interactive now, it's almost done. Great, we have a nice gap in between them. Okay, and when we hover, we will scale. We'll just throw that in right here. And hover, transform, scale, 1.1, sure. We'll transition our transform over the span of 0.2 seconds with an ease in, out, bam. Okay, and we could also make an active where it like pushed them down a little bit or something like that. Great. You could say user select none so that they can't select the text. Here, let's do it. User select none. Perfect. Okay, cool. So we made an overflow, a responsive overflow scroller. Look at this, right? Boom. What it doesn't do is continue to grow the width that it could take, uh, and that might be kind of neat. Then we might be able to gain back some of these avatar names that were cut off. But anyway, I still think there's some responsive work to be done. Um, this looks like it could collapse a little bit more intelligently and maybe even have some sort of ratio um, that made sure one of these was kind of always cut off. So like. I don't know. You might be able to do something there. All right. Well, okay. I don't know how long we're at this video, but I'm sure that went longer than we thought it was going to. But we made a really nice component, I think. Um, our effect turned out good. Oh, we never did the inner box shadow, did we? We're still missing a critical component that would help separate this. And do I just need to add another linear gradient? Let's see. Radial gradient. I'll add another one. This one is not going to be representing white. It will be representing a half opaque color of black. 
at like let's start it pretty dark at first and let's 64 percent i feel like i'm gonna want to zoom in to see this work here's one that's got a nice edge okay oh that's not actually not gonna work how about i zoom like this yes okay i'll save and i don't see it so let's go edit it because I mean, that was a pretty wild guess uh, we've got our figure picture which has this second radial gradient and let's try to get it to appear oh i saw it appear oh it's in the wrong order i think it just needs to be first hey let's tweak some of those values because those are ugly yeah whoa oh yeah i'm gonna hold alt Super subtle at 10%. Let's do 15%. Yes. Okay. Cool. Right? I like it. I like it. So we have a 60%, a 65%. And this came down to 15. I'll save and see if we, we maintain it. We do. Oh, that is so cool. That is super cool. I like how we pulled that off. We might even be able to like sneak the background, like the user's avatar image here is a background image. Um, wow, cool. I had a lot of fun doing that. Is that a weird jiggle I saw there? Yeah. Oh, it's scale and I'm scaled. Scale and scale. All right, anyway, that was it. We finished it. We wrapped our last little piece there. I'm proud of that one. I'm sure there's some great refactoring in here that could be done. So I want to hear your your thoughts. Tell me what I did wrong. How could it be better? Fork the code. I'll, you know, I'll have it in code pen. And um, until next time, uh, we'll be keep making these until y'all tell me to stop. Bye.